Today we're gonna to show you the effect of a mud ball. If you ever come up to your ball and you see some mud on the side, on the top, maybe on the bottom, you wonder what's gonna happen. We're gonna show you today in this video. Golfers, if you haven't already, subscribe to our channel. And if you like this video, drop a like and leave a comment as well. Hey there golfers, I'm Drew Mahol with Second Swing Golf. I'm joined by Thomas Campbell, Master Club Fitter at Second Swing, outside on the driving range today and covering kind of a different topic today, uh, mud balls. Uh, I know that's a, especially a common one for dew sweepers maybe playing in the morning, ground's a little more wet, uh, but a uh, common issue golfers have sometimes is mud will be on the ball uh, and if you're not doing lift clean and plays or anything like that, it could be an issue. So um, Thomas, um, you got one in your hand right there, what a mud ball might look like. So um, in your experience in playing, um, what have you maybe noticed uh, could be the effect of having a mud ball? First off, they really suck. <laughs> so it, it's really, really hard to figure out, you know, how far the ball is going to curve a certain direction if you have a mud ball. Even further, imagine you're hitting into a green, you've got maybe water left of the green or, or short-sighted, you yeah. can't miss this ball a certain direction. And then you get presented with this mud on the ball. You can't yeah. clean it off. What is it going to do? Well, generally speaking, what I have noticed is the ball kind of does the, does the opposite to whatever side the mud is hitting on. Okay. So for example, if the mud is on the left-hand side of the ball, the ball generally flies to the right side. Okay. The opposite would occur if the, ball is, if the mud is on the right side, the ball generally will curve pretty quickly to the left side. Of okay. There. But it's hard to really know because one, is the mud going to stay on, or how long is that mud going to stay on for? Mm -hmm. Then you got to add in other elements. You got to add in the wind. You got to add in temperature and the shot and the club you're hitting as well too. So right, it could really vary, but generally speaking, you're going to see the mud on the opposite side of the of the ball. The ball will go the opposite direction. Interesting, and I'm sure sure we'll see some differences too in how that ball launches a little bit, depending on where that mud is and maybe some of the spin as well. But I'm curious because I know I'm. I'm as guilty as anyone. You get up to your ball and maybe some wet conditions and there's mud on the side and you're kind of, uh, it's, it's a difficult task to try and figure out how to handle that. So right. uh, I'm curious to see how this performs. So I'll be hitting the shots today. Hit a few seven irons from kind of, we'll place the mud on various sides of the ball and see what happens with TrackMan. Yeah, we've tried to recreate the best we can do, like a mud ball. Imagine mm -hmm. you got mud on your, golf, on your golf ball. And we're gonna test four positions. Mud on the left, mud on the right, Mud on the top and mud on the bottom just to see what happens. All right, uh, I think I'm warmed up enough here. Well, let's see some shots. Okay, Drew, so let's start with mud on the left-hand side of the golf ball, sure. so facing towards you. Yeah, that definitely curved over there to the, to the right mm -hmm. side. It did. Yep. It kind of stayed low, I feel like, too. Maybe yeah, it did stay pretty low. Could have been the way I just swung the club a little bit there, but. So I, I mentioned the inconsistency. So this is, this is really interesting. So yes, the ball curved to the right when the mud was on the left-hand side, but your spin consistency was really interesting. Your efficiency, one, two, four, one, two, four, that didn't change. You hit the yeah. ball just as well for both of them. But the spin rate for shot one was 87.44. The spin rate for shot two was 44.52. Wow. So it was like split in half. It was kind of just, you're, you're guessing at that point. Like you, are, you are guessing, yes. The ball, it, you definitely did get an inconsistency. Um, so let's test the other direction. Okay. Let's see what it's like on the right side. Oh, that one didn't, uh, didn't start right, that's for sure. No, it took a while to almost, cur like, we got a wind going to the right and it kind of took a while to get moving over there. Right. Yeah, and you're face to path. So this is, this is really, really cool to look at. So your face to path was 1.7 on that shot, so positive. You would expect it to go right, right? Yeah. Well, the ball curved to the, to the left. You'll notice it started pretty far to the left and kept going yeah. to the left. We can see this on the screen that the orange line is basically going ball to the left. So really interesting. So yeah, because a positive face to path means right. my ball, the ball should start right of the target. And I, it started comfortably left. Right, you'd think with a, with a positive face to path, the ball would actually curve to the, uh, yes. to the right side. It actually did not. It just kind of went straight left. All right, let's try another one. 
Yeah, because that did not feel like a pull swing, and I still it, it looked like a pull shot when you. I, I could visually see that bull starting left. It was a little fat. Yeah, it was a little fat. It looked like it started just maybe a little straighter and then curved. Yeah, the wind. Not the, as much. The wind is bringing it back, which might not be vis like visible on the normalization with TrackMan, but. Right. Yeah, so that one did curve just a little to the right. It, a little bit of inconsistency there on, on, on the spin rate there, there as well. You didn't hit that one as well though, right? No, I, I hit that one pretty fat. So yeah, so, yeah it, it's, it's kind of interesting to, to see how little little less spin on, on that shot. Um, that one did curve just a little to the right. Okay. The first shot for sure, it just started left. Yep. Interesting. Yep. Okay. So you're going to get general trends, yeah. but you're also going to get inconsistency results yeah. as well. Right. Interesting. Well, I'm gonna try it now. We got it on top. Is that what? Yeah. Let's uh, let's, let's try it on top. I actually haven't. Uh, I don't know what it's gonna do here yet. Because you on mentioned the, in the you mentioned at the beginning it was you know depending on the side of the ball, you could see you know if it's on the right. We saw how it kind of started left a little bit. Right. So, but on top, this could be. Yeah, this will be interesting to see what happens to the launch angle and and spin rate. Do you think that mat, that weight would? Push the ball this way, possibly push it forward. Maybe, maybe. maybe yeah. We're 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 experimenting here a little bit. Yep. Yeah, she didn't look like it got affected that much. Yeah, it was it was kind of pretty similar numbers actually, similar to the yeah, just a tiny little fade that you're that you're hitting there. Mm -hmm. Spin rate was eighty-seven forty-two. It was just a little bit higher spin. Yeah, I did come at um, that one pretty steep. It felt like. The one, the one thing I do notice though, numbers wise, and I'll, I'm curious to see if this, this stands true for this next shot, is the launch angle was the lowest launch angle of them all. Okay. So the launch angle on that shot was 14.2. Um, that's the lowest by about two degrees. So oh, far. it is, okay. Yep. Yeah, it definitely feels like it's low, or launching lower. Yeah. I tugged that one, but I mean, even the other one I pulled, I was a little bit left with, with the mud on the right, I feel like that was a lot lower. That one was consistent with the launch angle again, 14.1. Okay. So spin rate was still around about 8,000 RPMs, um, but we definitely noticed the ball flight was a little lower. Okay. Yeah, so you can see here your smash factor, 128, 130, so you hit it just as solid as you did with the, with the other ones, mm -hmm. um, but the launch angle was considerably lower. Interesting. Yeah. Interesting. All right. Well then, so should the theory be with the mud on the bottom, should it be a higher launch? I mean, we're, um, we're the ball will be resting on mud here too. So I don't know. Maybe a little more spin. <laughs> That's interesting. You even put that. Uh, <laughs> it's almost teed up for me. Right. Somewhere is teed up. All right. Mud on the bottom of the ball. Interesting. I hit that pretty thin. Yeah, that'll be pretty thin. Yeah. Well, it, it spun at 4,300 RPMs of spin. So I don't know if it was that thin. Oh, really? But yeah, you that think, was You think spin would be higher. Right. Spin. Well, I also got some dirt in my face there, some mud. <laughs> Might be a little bit tentative here with hitting this one. All right, we just need one more swing out of you. Yeah, I think that I think it goes higher. I mean, maybe I'm higher. Wrong, I'm curious about spin on that one because that was one of my better strikes of the session here. Yep. Yeah, the spin rate jumped back up again. Yeah. So 83.67. Okay. Um, launch angle was definitely higher though. Yeah. So even when you got that first shot a little thin, the launch angle was 19.8. Really? And that was 19.9. So That's we can definitely draw some conclusions here when you got the ball on the ball. We can. So. I kind of want to go back through these. So, when the mud was on my side, left side, we saw right. the ball kind of tend to go, trying to kick right almost. So you kind of almost have to play. Now the mud's not going to be you know perfectly left side every time. It could be a little bit forward, left, back, yep. whatever. But we saw that ball try to tend, like start a little bit right and kind of fade more right. Yeah, we can see it on the dispersion screen here too. The the white circle, mud on the left, is the only one that was right of right of center. Really? Yep. So both those two shots were over there to the to the right side. Okay. So that's definitely showing the dispersion pattern. Um, if we look at mud on the right side, it mm -hmm. was the furthest to the left. So that's the orange circle. So it was a little bit over to the left sure. side. So the hypothesis there was pretty accurate. If you've got more weight on one side of the bowl, 
the ball was going to go the opposite direction. Yeah. So you've got weight on the right side, more weight, more mud on the right side of the ball, the ball's going to go left. Mud on the left side of the ball, the ball's going to go right. Mm -hmm. And then figuring out how much it's going to do it, yeah. that's kind of anyone's that's guess. A, that's, that's a measure of how much mud is on it. We kind of really loaded these up with mud to kind of show that effect, but I think it's, it's worth noting, you know, when you're on the course and let's say you come up to your ball and there's mud on the back side of it or on the bottom side of it, well, you kind of can, from here, at least have somewhat of a conclusion as to maybe how to play that. Or if there's mud on the right side of it, you're like, well, I'm going to aim a little bit more to the right side because it'll try to go left on me just a little bit. Yep. So. Yeah, so definitely be more conservative on, on that approach. Yeah. Like I said, if there's water left of the green and you've got mud on the right side of the ball, favor right. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> definitely yeah. favor right. Maybe a 20 yards right of the green. and. Yeah, don't aim for that flag you're trying to aim at. Instead, maybe go for middle of the green. And, and it's a little bit, and there's always unpredictability with your golf shots, but in particular here with the mud, and chances are you probably got water on it too, being early in the morning, um, if it's in wet conditions. So there's other things to consider, but uh, there's just unpredictability. I mean, and not that I am a flawless ball striker, but like it was even the shots that I figured I kind of would know where they were going, especially that one I hit thin with yep. the, the mud kind of lower on the ball. I was surprised that that thing went high and the spin was also low on that one. That one struck, that, I mean, shocked me. Right, yeah, so you hit that on thin. Um, you'd expect a thin shot to launch lower and spin high. Yeah. It launched low and spun low, which was really kind of interesting. Yeah. And then the next shot, you hit more salt, you hit solid. It gave us the exact same launch angle, but it just spun higher. Yeah. So, I don't know. I, I, nah. So yeah. So going coming back to the hypothesis for for those two situations. So what we're what we're seeing here is it really didn't affect the ball flight the direction as much. It kind of flew pretty straight like normal. But the only difference was when, when the mud was on top of the ball, the launch angle was 14.1 for a 7-iron. When the mud was on the bottom of the ball, your launch angle was 19.8. Yeah. And your consistency numbers were very consistent. We're talking plus or minus 0 0.1, plus or minus 0, .0. For, the, for the launch angle. For the launch angle, yeah. yeah. So, interesting. Yeah, that's, that's uh, something I'll take note of now, especially, you know, if you, again, you play in a muddy course or some, a course that is, uh, maybe recently have been you know dumped on by some rain, whatever the, whatever that case might be. That's where you get those mud balls, and if you're not playing lift clean in place, that's where um, you know you're going to see that effect a little bit. So it's something to take note of, and I certainly learned something uh, by hitting the shots today. Yeah, and then coming back to consistency too, like we, we notice, you know, yes, it can be a little human error related, but when you have mud on the ball, you don't know if it's going to stay on the ball, yeah. or you don't know if it's going to come off, or it's going to stay on for for a long time. That's where you're going to get the inconsistencies on the plus and minus with your spin rate, with the launch angle, with the, with the distance. Yeah. So it's sometimes it's easier to hit a shot where you don't try and hit it way up in the air. Yeah. Because that ball can really get influenced, especially if there is wind. So maybe hitting a shot that is a little lower trajectory. Yeah. Maybe, maybe is, club down and not swing as hard and play a little lower. I like that. I like right. that. That's a, that's a good plan for these shots. Maybe club down once, choke down a little bit, and, and take your losses if you have any be, just because of that. Because you might have something out of your control there a little bit. Right, yeah, so with mud was on the right, you had the least amount of curve. You, you play a bit of a fade normally. Yeah. So your, cur your curve was 19 feet to the right. When mud was on the left, your curve was 82 feet to the right. So it was 60 feet difference right there. And then when mud was on wow. the bottom and the top, that's where we notice you're 65 feet to the right and 46 feet to the right. So more of your traditional shot, just with different launch angles. Interesting, yeah. yeah. Makes, man, I mean, it all makes sense. I like the numbers totally, when, I, when I'm hearing them, I, they totally make sense. Um, it's just I didn't realize they were that much of a dramatic effect, but here we are. Yeah, yeah. So really interesting ball flight. Uh, make sure that you take that in consideration when mud is on your ball. It's on the left side of the ball or mm -hmm. right side of the ball because the ball can definitely do some interesting things. Yes. I do recommend playing a little more conservative knockdown shot just to be able to control it because you definitely don't want to try and hit a high fade when yeah. you got mud or high draw when you got mud on the side of the ball because it could go anywhere. For sure. Well, golfers, if you enjoyed this content, make sure you like the video, make sure you drop a comment, make sure you subscribe to the channel. Uh, we'll have more of these kind of unique topic uh, videos here coming up soon.